Hello and welcome in this fifth lecture of the Introduction to Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning for Engineers class. So in the previous lectures, we mostly talked about um, artificial intelligence and how to solve um, a given problem, considering a given problem, how to find the best sequence of action in order to uh, achieve the goal that you are targeting and how to, to solve this problem as efficiently as possible. So for this, all the, um, uh, the tree search method that we, that we reviewed, those methods um, are uh, typical artificial intelligence methods. And in this method, what we did is to find uh, like the most optimal rules uh, in order to efficiently take the, the right action and uh, minimize the number of steps that is needed before you can uh, uh, achieve the goal of your problem. So now we're going to talk about the different types of um, artificial intelligence, where in this case, uh, we are going to, to start talking about machine learning, which is a different way to approach problems um, where you don't um, come up with some rules, some explicit rules on how to solve problem, but you are trying to solve problem by learning from previous experience, by analyzing previous data, and by using those data, by inferring some uh, some patterns, trying to find some relationship between uh, those data, and based on this, based on the patterns that you find on data, make some predictions on how to uh, predict uh, quantities, predict uh, uh, predict the the future, or predict um, uh, properties of uh, of materials, for example, or predict performance of buildings, uh, structures, etc. So as a reminder, so in the, the first lecture, we defined machine learning as being the science of getting computers to learn how to perform a given task without being explicitly programmed on how to do this task. So here, that's a key difference between uh, um, what we saw previously, uh, the types of problem that we saw previously in the previous lectures for uh, artificial intelligence problem in the sense that here, now we are going to uh, try to solve problems to make some prediction without explicitly programming um, uh, to, to write a code that explicitly knows how to solve this problem. For example, in the, um, uh, in the previous problems, when we were trying to find an optimal path to go from an initial position to a final position, we knew what was the, the different way that you can um, uh, move from one position to the other. Like you have different types of actions that you can take. You know exactly what are the rules. And we came up with some algorithm. For example, the, the greedy search says that it's the, the most optimal way to move from one point to the next is to always move to the point that minimizes the distance from the final destination. Here, uh, when we talked about machine learning, that's a different paradigm in the sense that all we are going to do is to try to come up with, uh, to try to teach computers how to solve a given problem, but without explicitly uh, teaching uh, what are the different actions that the, the computer needs to take on, without, pro without providing some explicit rules on how the computer uh, should solve this this problem or perform this task. So let's see an example to make this um, a little bit clearer. So let's see an example on how uh, machine learning uh, differs from uh, other types of approach that you can have when you want to solve a given problem. So in this case, let's um, assume that uh, you have a given goal and your goal is to uh, predict whether um, a, a building is damaged or not predict if um, a building is uh, is damaged or not so for example following um, uh, an earthquake so you have a, an earthquake or some kind of uh, natural uh, disaster like this and you want to be having uh, the ability to to predict if the the building got damaged or not based on the analysis of a, of a picture. So you, you take a picture of this building or you use some, uh, some pictures found on the social networks or maybe a satellite picture. Um, and um, you will, uh, based on this picture, um, 
uh, find um, a, a way to predict whether this um, uh, building has been damaged or not. So in this case, you want to write a program that will take as input a picture and then uh, make a prediction on whether this building on this picture is being damaged or not. Has it been damaged or not during the, the natural uh, disaster? So then there is two ways you can uh, think about how to solve this problem. The first way is what I would call the, um, the traditional approach. So this is not the machine learning approach. This is how you would uh, do it in the traditional way. And then uh, the second thing that we are going to see is the, the machine learning um, approach, uh, where in this case, the, the, the way to approach uh, this problem uh, will be uh, completely different. And we are going to uh, illustrate uh, this thing. OK, so let's think about how you would do it with the, the traditional approach. So in the traditional approach, if you want to teach a computer to recognize and to predict whether a building is damaged or not, what you will do is, so you will start with your, uh, this is your computer here. And the first thing that you will need to provide to your computer is um, some data. So you will provide some data. In this case, the, the data that you provide are the, the pictures of the building. And then what you want is uh, you want your computer to give you an answer. You want your computer to give you um, an answer. And in this case, the answer that you want or the, the output that you will get out of the computer is the answer to the problem. Is it uh, damaged or uh, not damaged? And so that's the answer that you want the computer to give you. And the way you are going to teach the computer um, how to predict whether, based on the analysis of a picture, if uh, the building is damaged or not, is by providing some uh, explicit rules. So you are going to write a program with some um, some conditions, some loops, etc., with um, some rules on uh, uh, some explicit condition of what defines a crack in um, in a picture, for example. So you will write some uh, some condition that if there is a certain number of pixels that look like a crack, then you will uh, predict that this building has been damaged. So here you will write some um, explicit um, condition that uh, some explicit rules like a code that is based on your experience, based on what you think is, um, is a crack and how you think it is possible to recognize a crack. So if you as human, you would look at this, um, at, this, uh, at this building, at the picture of this building, you would know how to recognize a crack because you know that a crack is something that is uh, elongated, something that uh, does not have the same color as the wall, something that um, uh, is a discontinuity uh, within, the, um, within the wall. So if you recognize this kind of patterns, um, then uh, you can try to teach the computer how to recognize the existence of a crack. And based on this, the computer will, uh, based on those rules, based on those explicit rules, those explicit conditions that you are providing the computer, the pro computer will give you an answer. Uh, if you provide new pictures, it, it can tell you, yes, I recognize that there is a crack or no, I don't see any crack. So I don't think the, the computer, the, 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 the building is damaged. And then, so this is for the traditional approach. Then there is an other way that you can achieve this, which is the, 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 the machine learning paradigm, which is a, a different way to um, achieve the, the same thing. So in this case, you would still start with your, um, your computer. Um, you will still providing some, um, some data to the computer. So you will still provide some, um, some, some pictures. So the, the pictures of the buildings. But here, uh, the main difference is that your goal in this case will not to directly get whether this, um, this picture is um, associated with a building that is damaged or not. And the, the reason you don't want to do this is because you don't want to have to write some explicit rules. So uh, if you don't know 
how to recognize that the, the building is damaged or not, it will be impossible for you to write a program with some explicit condition on what makes a building being damaged or not. So in the case of a building being damaged, maybe you can, um, uh, it's still possible to find a, an explicit way to teach a program on how to detect whether the building is damaged. But sometimes uh, we want to make some prediction and we have no rules. We have no understanding of what is governing the, the behavior of what we are trying to predict. For example, if you want to predict the, the, the stock price uh, of, of, a given, uh, of a given stock, like you have no, um, you cannot write some explicit rules that if something happened, then the stock is going to go up or if something else happened, then the stock is going to go down because it doesn't work like this. We don't know if we were, if we had the ability to have some rules to predict the, the stock price, then uh, everybody would become very rich. But we don't have this ability because we don't know like the explicit rules that govern uh, the, the price of a stock. It's something that is so complicated that we cannot explicitly give um, some, some condition on how to predict this thing. So in the case of, uh, of our example, in this case, we don't, we don't want to teach explicitly the computer on how to, to learn on how to, to, to detect whether there is a damage or not in a building. We want the computer to learn on its own to uh, predict and to recognize what makes uh, a building being damaged and how does it differentiate, how, does it, uh, how is it different from the picture of a building that is not damaged. And the way we're going to do this is that rather than providing the program, um, rather, than rather than providing the computer with a program that contains some explicit rules on how to achieve these goals, we are going to provide directly the output so we are going to provide, in this case, the answer. We are going to say, um, is this picture associated with a building that is damaged or not? So in this case, we are going to provide directly some, uh, some pictures. And for some of the pictures that we know that the building has been damaged, and for some other pictures, we know that the, bu the building has not been damaged. So we are going to provide some, uh, some training examples. So we are provide some examples for which we already know the answer. And we are going to uh, th then let the computer come up with its own way on how to recognize a building that has been damaged or a building that has not been damaged. And in this case, it's completely different because this time, rather than having the computer give you the answer, you are giving the answer directly to the computer. And what you want is that the computer will in turn give you the, the program. So um, in the case of the traditional approach, you provide the program. So you provide the explicit rules that defines whether a building is being damaged or not. Here, when you do machine learning, it's the complete opposite approach. You provide directly the example. So you provide some example of building. Some of them are being damaged. Some of them are not being damaged. Then you let the computer figure out on its own how to recognize what are the characteristics uh, of a damaged buildings or what are the characteristics of a building that is not damaged. So in this case, now the computer will uh, learn on its own on uh, how to recognize the crack. It's going to uh, figure out on its own that if there is some, um, some things that looks like a crack in the picture, then it means that the, the building is uh, probably being damaged. So in this case, it will learn on its own to come up with the rules that defines a damaged building from a non-damaged buildings. And it's going to give you as an outcome, those roles. It's going to give you as, a, as an output the, the, the program itself of the, what, what uh, makes, um, uh, what differentiates a picture of a damaged building and how is it different from a picture of uh, a non-damaged buildings. And so here it's completely the opposite approach. And uh, the main idea is that if, the, if now you have the program, then you can use this program and go back to a, a more conventional approach. Once you have the program, once the computer has given you the, um, the, 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 the program that can be used uh, 
uh, to recognize based on a picture if it is uh, a building that is damaged or not, then you can use this program and uh, use this based on uh, new pictures to make some uh, predictions on whether this building is being damaged or not. So the idea is that it's going to be um, uh, a process that has different steps. Step one, you will provide some data associated with the answer. So this is the step where you will uh, train the model. You will provide some, um, some examples where you provide both the, um, the, the data that you want to use as an input and you will also provide the answer of this problem to the computer then the computer will learn on its own how to come up with the program that um, that can uh, figure out on its own how to uh, recognize if a building is damaged or not and once you have this program the the second step is that you can make some uh, some prediction once you have the program that can be used to uh, to predict whether the building is damaged or not then you can uh, pr uh, provide some uh, some new uh, new pictures of new buildings that the, the computer has never seen before and because the computer came up on its own with some rules on how to recognize a damaged buildings then it's going to to use those new photos and those new pictures and uh, figure out on its own based on what it has learned from the the training example that you initially provided it's going to use its previous experience it's going to use those previous examples of damaged and undamaged buildings in order to base on new pictures make a prediction on whether um, this damage this uh, building is likely to be damaged or not so if you think about this process of learning by seeing some examples rather than having some explicit rules it's actually very similar to the way we learn as human when we are babies for example, like as a baby, when you learn on how to recognize a dog, a dog from a cat, you are not being uh, explained what are the, the explicit rules that define, um, that discriminate a dog and differentiate it from, uh, from a cat. You are, you are not going to say that if the size of the animal is lower than this, then it's more likely to be a cat. And if the size of the animal is um, higher than this threshold, then it's more likely to be a dog or... Uh, you don't learn by uh, looking at the, the shape of the nose or by trying to listen to the, to the noise of the animal and based on this have some condition on if this animal makes these types of noise then it's likely to be a dog or if it makes these types of noise it's more likely to be a cat. That's not how we learn. The way we learn is by example. We see a picture of a cat then we see a picture of a dog or we see a, a real cat and we see a, a real dog in front of us your parents tells you it's a cat or tell you it's a dog and you come up on your own with the, your own rules on what differentiate a dog from a cat you don't need to be uh, provided explicitly those rules you come up yourself with uh, some some patterns like you recognize on your own what are the distinctive features uh, that distinguish a dog from a cat you 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 can recognize on your own that if the um, uh, if the the animal has a more elongated nose it's more likely to be a dog so in your case you just see some examples of pictures and dogs and cats and you learn on your own to find the rules so in this case uh, the, the process as a baby to learn the difference between a dog and a cat is very much like uh, this uh, process number two where you are provided some, uh, some data, some pictures, or some um, examples um, of dogs and cats and uh, somebody, either a book or um, your parents tells you if it's a cat or not a cat, if it's a cat or a dog and you come up yourself with the program that later on you can use whenever you see a new pictures to this to the to, to predict whether it's a dog or a cat so you come up yourself with the program that your brain is using to make this prediction it's not somebody else that tells you explicitly what is the 
the the the program that you should be using in your brain to to decide if it's a dog or a cat so that's the the machine learning approach you provide some examples and you let the computer come up with the program on its own rather than uh, providing explicitly the program and letting the computer give you the um, uh, the answer so when you want to build a, a machine learning model uh, to make some prediction there is a, a different steps that you will typically have to um, to follow like the, the the free basic step that you will have to follow is that first the way you learn uh, in machine learning is based on some examples so the first thing is that you will need to have your computer uh, observe some uh, some examples so you will need to provide some examples uh, about what you are trying to 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 uh, to, to have the computer learn. So those examples, this is what we are going to call the, the, the training set. So the training set will be um, some, some data, some pictures, uh, some, uh, some previous data that has been accumulated before, and you will use those data to teach the computer something. So those data can be um, uh, different pictures and uh, where you tell the computer this picture is a dog or this picture is a cat or it can be previous data of uh, for example if you're trying to predict the price of a house you will come up with some uh, previous historical data of the the price of the house uh, and uh, what was the, um, the the location of this house what was the size of this house what was the number of bedroom of this house so uh, th those are the data that you will provide the computer and uh, for example, in your case, the, 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 your goal would be to have the computer come up with a way to predict the price of this house as a function of the, the, the different features, like the size of the house, the, um, uh, the number of levels, the number of bedrooms, uh, number of bathrooms, etc. So then that's the, that's the step, step two. So once you um, provided some example for the computer to observe, the computer will try to learn so it will try to uh, infer some um, some patterns within those data that that you are providing so it will try to find some uh, some relationship between the data uh, for example some relationship between the inputs and the outputs or find some kind of some patterns in in those data it's going to use those data that you provide as an observation and is going to try to understand the, the relationship between those data or different patterns uh, within those data or try to make some sense of those data so this is the the process of uh, learning so this is where the, the the model is trying to base on those examples learn something about the data and once the model has learned uh, something about the data, then it's going to be able to, to make some, uh, some predictions. So the, the computer at this point, once it has learned on how to uh, recognize a cat on a dog based on the pictures of cats and dogs that you provided, is going to be able to now receive a new picture that it has never seen before, but now it has learned what are the characteristic features of a cat so it's going to be able to make a prediction and say okay i think this is a cat or i think this is um, a dog so now it's going to make some prediction um, based for uh, previously unseen data so you provided some data that, uh, that are going to be used as example so this is the the training set and once the model has learned then it's going to make to be able to make some prediction for data that it has never seen before like some pictures that it has never seen before this is going to be the the test set so in this case those are going to be some data that the the model has never seen before and it's going to be able to make some prediction of what it thinks um, is the answer for the new data that you are providing so what we are going to do today is we are not going to, to go into too much details just yet, but we are going to see what are the, the different types of machine learning problems. So we are going to, to review some kind of uh, classification of the different types of uh, machine learning problems. 
So uh, there is three main categories. So it's not necessarily a, a fully fixed category. Sometimes you have some examples of machine learning prem that can be um, slightly across uh, two of those uh, categories, for example. But but roughly we can um, uh, uh, classify machine learning problems and algorithm into three different families. The, the first thing is everything that is um, uh, can be called as a supervised learning. So that's going to be the, the first family of uh, machine learning problem. And in this case, so we're going to see some example, but in this case, in the case of supervised learning, the, the training of the, um, of the model is based on some uh, data for which you know the answer already. So this is what we are going to call some, uh, some labeled data. So in this case, the training is based on um, uh, labeled uh, data. So for example, in the case of um, uh, dogs and cats, it means that in this case, you will provide some pictures to the computer. And for each picture, you will say, this is a dog or this is a cat. So you will provide the answer to them to the computer and you will let it figure out on its own how to predict this label, how to predict if it's a cat or a dog. So in this case, you provide um, both the data and the, the answer, uh, the label to the to the computer and the computer will uh, come up on its own with ways to predict uh, this label for future types of data that it has never seen before. The second type of machine learning problem is going to be the opposite, that is to say unsupervised machine learning, so unsupervised learning. So in this case, um, as its name suggests, it's uh, pretty much the opposite of supervised learning. In this case, uh, the computer will learn how to make some, uh, some prediction without having some label data. So in this case, the, the training uh, is based on unlabeled data. So in this case, uh, for example, the, um, the, the computer would be provided a given series of pictures of animals. Some of those animals can be a cat, some of those animals can be a dog. And uh, the computer doesn't know that. It doesn't know the label. It doesn't know for each picture if it's a cat or a dog. But what the computer will do is to analyze all those pictures that are providing to it. And it's going to try to look at some patterns within the data. It's going to try to, to, to figure out that certain of those animals appear to look like each other and uh, they appear to differ. So there appears to be different families of animals. So it will create on its own two, two families of animals. One family will turn out to be the, the cats and one family will turn out to be the dog. But in this case, the computer will come up to this um, uh, solution just by looking at a large collection of pictures and to come up on its own with some um, similarities and some differences between those data and to group those data into different classes or different um, different groups of data that look like each other. So that's an example of, in this case, unsupervised machine learning because you only provide some, uh, some data, but you don't uh, provide any label to those data. You don't say if those pictures are cats or dogs. You let the computer find on its own some, uh, some patterns within those data, some similarities and some differences uh, between those data. And then the, the last category of, uh, of machine learning, which uh, is slightly different, is what we called uh, reinforced, uh, reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning. So in this case, it's a slightly uh, different class of, um, of machine learning where uh, typically you have a problem where you will learn from the, the, the feedback of your environment. So in this case, you will not learn by having a, a pre-existing collection of data that you use as a training, or you will, you will not uh, have a, a large collection of data that you will learn. You learn in, uh, in real time. So in this case, it's uh, uh, more like a, a real time uh, learning. 
and the the way um, uh, you learn in this case is that you the, the computer will make some actions and based on those actions will either get rewarded for this action or will get penalized for this action and uh, based on this the, the computer will learn on its own about whether this was a smart action or bad actions so this is typically in this case example of if you're trying to to train um, to, to teach a computer on how to to play a video game for example or another example is self-driving cars so if you're trying to to teach a model on how to drive a car um, the, the way you are going to do this is typically by a reinforcement learning where the, the computer will make some actions uh, and those actions will, uh, after they are made, be rewarded or penalized and the computer will, based on this, based on the feedback from the environment, um, will learn uh, on how to do the, the right actions at the right time. So now we are going to see some uh, examples of those uh, three types of, uh, of learning. So let's start with um, supervised um, learning. So in the case of uh, supervised learning, there is a uh, two subcategories of supervised learning. Uh, the first category is a uh, regression problem. And uh, the second category is classification problem. So in the case of regression, so remember that in the case of supervised learning, you are going to provide some um, uh, training example to the computer where each example has its label. So you provide some, uh, some pictures of cats and dogs and you let the computer learn on how to recognize a cat or recognize a dog. So the computer will learn how to make some predictions. So um, there can be two different types of prediction that it can make. The first type is regression. In the case of regression, uh, what the computer will try to do is to predict um, a continuous output. So what I mean by a continuous output is that in this case, the goal of the, um, of the, the computer will be to, uh, to make a prediction of uh, a number. So um, the, in this case, the output will be a number and this number can have uh, a given value, 1, 2, 3, 1.5, 2.5, etc. So it's a, it's a number that can continuously vary. So this, in this case, it can be like predicting the, the price of a house, predicting the, the properties of a given material, predicting um, it. So you're predicting a number and this number can change continuously as a function of certain inputs so in this case you predict a continuous output as a function of um, inputs so the inputs themselves can be numbers or they can be uh, just some um, some information so for example in the case of if you're trying to predict the price of a house um, the, the inputs can be what is the, the area of the house. So that would be a, a number, a continuous number, like the number of uh, square feet of the, of the house. Or it can be some, um, uh, some what, what we call some categorical variables. So it can, for example, it can be is the, um, the house in a good neighborhood or in a bad neighborhood. So this, in this case, that would not be uh, a continuous number. That would just be... Um, an information that would be just yes or no. Yes, the, the house is in a good neighborhood or no, it's not in a good neighborhood. So it's still some information, so it's still an input. So in this case, in the case of the regression, you have certain types of inputs, certain types of information about the house, and you're trying to predict a continuous output, which in this case is the price of the house. And um, in the case of the regression, the defining feature of the regression is to predict an output that is a continuous number. Um, and then you have the second categories of problem, which is classification problem, where this time you are not trying to predict a continuous output, but you are trying to predict a, a discrete output. So when I say um, uh, a discrete output, I mean uh, that in this case, you are not going to predict a number that can continuously vary and have a, 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 an infinite number of possible values, you're going to predict um, a given answer that has a finite number of different possibilities. So for example, it can be uh, a, a yes or no, or it can be 
uh, a true or false um, or in the case of uh, the example that we talked before it can you can be uh, if you're trying to predict based on a, a picture if it's a cat or dog that would be an example of classification because in this case uh, either it's a cat or it's a dog or it's another animal but it's not a continuous output you cannot be uh, 0.5 uh, times a dog and 0.5 times a cat that you either you are a dog or you're a cat there is nothing in between so there is no continuous output so in this case it's an example of discrete output where you have just a finite number of possible values and in this case so it's the same idea you're still going to have some um, some uh, inputs that you are going to use and based on those inputs, you are going to make a prediction. But the main difference between regression and classification is that in the case of regression, you are predicting um, a number that can have different values. In the case of classification, you are predicting some different outputs, some discrete outputs, which are going to call some, some classes, which are different families. Like uh, you are going to predict if this picture is a cat or a dog or something else cat, dog, etc. Those are the different classes. Those are discrete choices that are not continuous. So let's start with uh, an example of um, regression uh, problem. So example of regression again, so you're trying to predict uh, a continuous output and the way you are going to have the computer do this is by providing some examples that are labeled so you will you will provide you will provide some uh, to, to the computer some training example of uh, different data for which you have both the input and the output that you're trying to predict so for example if you're trying to 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 build up um uh, a code, a model that can predict the, the strength of concrete as a function of how what this concrete is made of. So that would be an example of, uh, of regression. You're trying to predict a continuous number, which in this case would be the, the strength of the concrete, how strong it is. Or you could be, for example, interested in uh, predicting a model that predicts um, the energy consumption of uh, of a building as a function of the the surface of the building the number of labels um, the the material this building is made of etc so um, that in this case you would be predicting again a continuous number which is the the energy consumption of this building per day or per year so that would be an example of uh, of regression so let's see an example for example like let's assume that you want to predict the um, the strength of uh, concrete. So the way the different steps uh, of how you would do this is you need to start with some uh, some data, the data, the label data that you are going to provide to the, the computer to, to have the computer learn on its own how to predict the, the strength of concrete. So in this case of the case of the strength of concrete, the strength of concrete is the, the, the stress or the pressure that you need to apply to a given concrete to, to break it. For example, by applying, uh, taking a, a concrete pillar um, and uh, then applying uh, a given force like this and measuring for which pressure are you going to uh, break this uh, pillar of, uh, of concrete. So this so uh, this gives you the strength. So the, the higher the strength of a concrete, the, the stronger it is, the more it can uh, uh, carry some loads before uh, having uh, the potentially a chance to break. So in this case, so the way you're going to do this is that you need to first provide uh, the computer with some uh, training data. So you will need to um, come up with some, uh, some data that you are going to provide to the computer. So in the case of the data, uh, what you will need is some, um, uh, so you will need to provide the, the, the output that you are trying to uh, teach the computer to predict. In this case, this is the, the strength. You are trying to predict the computer, uh, to try to teach the computer on how to predict the strength. So uh, in the case of supervised learning, you need to provide this strength. The strength is the, the label of the data. So the strength of a concrete sample can be uh, in megapascal or can be in, uh, in PSI, depending on the unit. It's a continuous number. And this is what we're going to call the observation. This um, observation. So this is what the, the quantity that you are measuring. So this is the, what we call the, uh, the observation. 
and uh, you need to uh, to teach the computer how to make to predict this quantity this observation and for this you are going to provide some uh, some features so the features are the going to be the um, the inputs of the of the model uh, so this is what we're going to call some um, some features the features are the some characteristics um, that you will use to try to come up with a prediction of the observation. So in the case of the concrete sample, uh, a useful feature is the, the ratio of how much water do you put with respect to how much cement do you put. So you, you get some cement, which is some kind of uh, gray or white powder that you, can, uh, that you can buy in some stores. Then you're going to mix it with some water and the ratio of the water, the mass of water divided by the mass of cement, in this case, is going to be uh, a useful feature uh, that you can use to, uh, to predict the strength of concrete. So the features needs to be some information that you can easily know um, and that you will use as an input for the model. For example, if you are trying to predict the price of a house, the features, the things, the information, the characteristics of the house that you can easily know would be the size of the house, the number of rooms, the number of bathrooms, the, the number of levels in the house. Those are all kind of features, some information that are that is easily accessible and that you will use as an input for your model to, to predict the, uh, the output. So the input is typically what we are going to call like uh, x, this is the, the x axis. And then you have the, um, the output of your model. This is what you want to predict. So this is what we are going to typically call uh, y, which is um, what we are going to, to predict on the y axis. So then the first thing is you need to provide some example. So you need to come up with um, previous measurements of different concretes in this case that were made with different ratio of water to, to cement, so different amount of water. And so uh, for each of those concretes, you will have some um, observation. So you will uh, have some examples of data measurements for which you have some example of strength that got measured for different concretes as a function of how much water was in this concrete. So in this case, those uh, symbols here are the, the data that you are going to use to train your model. So those are this is the, the, the training sets. This is the, the training data. Those are the data that are uh, labeled in this case, because for each um, concrete for uh, for the each amount of water to cement ratio, you know already the, the associated label. That is to say, you know what is the strength of this concrete. So in this case, this is the, the, the training data that you are providing to the computer. Then the, the step two, uh, after um, having the computer observe those data, is that this the, the computer is going to um, try to come up with some pattern. It's going to infer some, uh, some pattern in those data. So for example, the computer will say that, okay, I think that the relationship between the, the features and the observation is uh, a line like this. So in this case, this will be the, the inferred uh, pattern. So this is the pattern within the, the data that the computer finds on its own. It finds a relationship between the, the features X and the observation Y. So in this case, this is what the computer is learning from the training data. It infer a pattern or a relationship between the, 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 the features and the observation. Uh, so this is um, uh, the, the, if we think about the different steps, step one, you provided some data for the computer to observe. Step two, the computer is uh, learning. So it's inferring some, um, some patterns within the data. And the step three is that now, now that you have inferred a pattern, you will be able to make some, uh, some prediction. It means that now, if I'm giving you a given uh, concrete and I'm giving you, um, I'm saying that the, I'm, uh, for this concrete, you will have 
a water to cement ratio of 0.2 so uh, if i'm giving you this this feature then based on the the pattern that was inferred by the, the computer now you can uh, use this information to make a prediction on what would be the, the the strength associated to a concrete with a water to cement ratio of 0.2 so that's the step three now you in once you have um, uh, a model that has learned some relationship between the feature and the observation now you can make some prediction and for different uh, water to cement ratio you can uh, tell me what is the the corresponding strength once the model has learned this it's able to make some prediction for some uh, data some uh, some feature that it has never seen before so now let's see uh, an example of classification problem so in the case of classification it's very similar to regression but instead of predicting and teaching the computer on how to predict a continuous number now you're trying to predict a discrete quantity like you're trying to predict different classes you are trying to predict uh, uh, an output that can only have a selected number of different values that cannot continuously vary like a, like a number so example for example would be to uh, the, the first example that we talked about based on the picture trying to predict if the building is damaged or not so this is an example of classification the building either is damaged or not damaged but it cannot be somewhere in between um, or uh, for example predict based on the characteristics of a building if it's going to collapse or not again that's uh, there is only yes or no answer only two possible answers or trying to provide some pictures and uh, having the computer predict whether it's a cat or a dog again there is uh, only two choices there is no continuous choice in this case so that would be a classification problem so let's see um, a, a, an example to illustrate uh, the, the different step that you would have in the case of a classification problem so for example let's assume that uh, in the case in this case your goal is to predict um, uh, if you have a given earthquake for a given building is it likely to collapse or not so uh, same thing so classification is we are still in the case of um, supervised um, learning which means that in this case we still need to provide some labeled data for the, the computer to learn how to make this prediction as to whether the building is going to collapse or not so in this case, you need to same uh, same thing as for regression. You need to come up with some data, and you will need to provide those data to the computer. So in this case, um, the the what you are trying to predict is will the building collapse or will the building uh, not collapse? Okay. So in this case, you have only uh, two uh choices so those are the, um, the the observation the observation is um is the building uh going to um to collapse or not and in this case you have only two possible options either it will collapse or it will not collapse that's what you're trying to predict and to trying to predict this you need to uh, have some information you need some some features you need to find some features that are likely to be influential some features that are going to govern the the propensity of a building to either collapse or not collapse so in this case we're going to sample uh, for the sake of this example select only two features the first feature that is going to be probably important is the year um of the of the construction so what is the the in which year this building uh, got constructed uh, why is this feature most likely influential because uh, buildings that are that have been constructed recently they are less likely to collapse than uh, buildings that have been um, uh, constructed uh, uh, a longer time ago uh, and another feature that is probably pretty important is the just the, the magnitude of the earthquake so if you have a uh, in this case if you have a given earthquake uh, if it has a pretty low magnitude then it's unlikely that the, the buildings is going to collapse but if the earthquake has a higher magnitude then it's 
it's very likely that the, the, the building is going to collapse. So in this case, um, you need to come up with some training examples. So in this case, you need to go back to previous examples of previous earthquakes and collect some data uh, about um, cities that got affected by earthquake and look at the, the buildings that either collapsed or did not collapse and do that for different types of earthquakes, different types of magnitudes to build a training set that you will feed to the computer. So you need to, to, to collect some data. So for example, you will um, uh, collect some examples of buildings that did not collapse. So you will take, uh, you will have one example of a building. It got uh, constructed pretty recently. So um, uh, it's uh, high on the y-axis because the year of construction is pretty high. And this building did not collapse so in this case it should be uh, in uh, red uh, because the it did not collapse because this building was very new and the magnitude of the earthquake was very low so you have different examples like this you you get some um, different examples of um, of data of um, buildings that uh, did not collapse during previous um, uh, uh, earthquakes. So you, you, you gather all those examples. And then you same thing, you survey um, during previous earthquakes some examples of buildings that did collapse. And same thing, you are going to, to um, uh, uh, store those data. So each, for each of those buildings that did collapse, you record what was the magnitude of the, of the earthquake in which year this uh, building was uh, was made and you take those examples you add it to your training set so in this case this is what it would look like you have different examples of um, diff for each buildings you know some features which is the year of the construction and uh, the magnitude of the earthquake and then you know the, the corresponding output, the corresponding label, which um, in this case is the observation, which is um, either the building collapsed or did not collapse. In this case, um, the, the pattern uh, that the, the machine learning model is, is, is going to try to infer is to find a way to separate those two classes. So in this case, what the, the, the model will do is to come up with, for example, like a line like this that separates um, the building that did collapse from the building that did not collapse. So in this case, this is um, um, a boundary. So um, uh, uh, a boundary that separates the, the two classes. So in this case, you have the, the class one, which is uh, did not collapse, no collapse. And you have the, the class two here, uh, which is uh, the buildings that did collapse. And you find here a, a boundary or a boundary decision that separates those, those two classes. And in this case, that's the kind of uh, pattern that the computer will try to do. So uh, this boundary uh, is, um, in this case, what we called uh, an hyperplane. Uh, hyperplane means that it's a plane that distinguishes the, the two classes. So the reason it's called hyperplane, uh, hyperplanes means that the, the dimension is uh, uh, l just lower by one than the number of features that you, hi that you have. For example, if you had only uh, one feature, which is only the, um, the, the, the earthquake magnitude, in this case, your boundary would be just one point, which would be just a threshold of earthquake magnitude. And below this um, uh, threshold, you would predict that the, the building will not collapse. And that higher than this threshold, you would predict that the building is going to collapse. In this case, if you use only one feature, it means that your dimension is one. And in that case, your boundary will be just one point and one point has a dimension of zero. So the dimension of the hyperplane is the number of feature minus one. Now, in this case of, uh, in this example, we have two features. Um, and in, the, in this case, the, your boundary 
that um, uh, distinguish, find the separation between the two classes is a line. A line has a dimension of one. So in this case, you have two features and your boundary is a line. A, a line has a dimension of one because there is only one way you can move through a line. You can go right or go left. If you had uh, three features, like for example, if you had the earthquake magnitude as feature one, the year of construction as feature two, and maybe the, the material the, 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 um, the building is made of as a third feature. So now you have three features. Now um, the, the boundary that the, um, the, the computer will have to find in this case will be um, a plane. So it will have to find a plane that distinguishes um, buildings that will collapse based on those three features from the building that will not collapse. So in the case of a plane, uh, you have in this case uh, three features and a plane is something that has a two uh, dimension, like a plane has two dimensions. So the hyperplane, the boundary that separates the, um, the, the features is always a, a dimension that is the, the number of features, the dimensionality of the feature space minus one. So that's why it's called a hyperplane. It has always a dimension that is uh, the number of features minus one. So in this case, we have only two features. So we have just a line, which is a, a one dimensional boundary, just a line that separates the two um, families of data, data points. And so this is um, the, the process of learning. In this case, the process of learning is for the computer to infer this boundary uh, that uh, um, separates the, the buildings that collapse from the building that do not collapse based on the knowledge of those features. So once you have learned, so again, the, the process is very similar. The step one is you provide some, uh, some training. So you, you, op you provide some uh, training example, some data uh, with some features and their corresponding label. And so the, the, the computer will observe those data. Second step, this is the learning. The computer is um, uh, making some, um, uh, trying to infer some um, some patterns, uh, some relationship within the data, and in this case, it will try to find uh, the the best definition for a given boundary that separates the cases where there is a collapse from the cases where there is no collapse. And once you have this boundary, then you can use it to make some prediction. Now you can say that if I'm taking a given building and this building was made in um, uh, a given year, then you can say that if um, you take a given earthquake, you can make a prediction that this uh, building here most likely will not collapse because it's on uh, one side of the boundary. But if you take another building that uh, is um, is a older uh, building, and uh, in the case of um, uh, a more intense earthquake, then you, your prediction will be that in this case, you predict that this building is going to collapse. So once your model has found this decision boundary, then you can use this boundary to predict based on the value of the features if the building is going to collapse or not. So you can make some, uh, some prediction. That's the, the step three. You can make some uh, some prediction for um, to predict for new buildings that the model has never seen whether it thinks that this building is going to collapse or not. So the typical steps to build um, a supervised machine learning model, whether it's a classification model or regression models, is um, as follows. So um, the step one is you need to come up with um, with a goal. So you need to identify a goal that is to say you need to come up with a, a problem that you are trying to solve to to identify what are you trying to um, to predict so you are trying to to predict an output or uh, an observation so you need to identify with the what is the objective what is the the goal then you need to come up with um, uh, some guesses, some hypotheses of what you think are, are the, the influential features. So you need now to identify some, uh, some features that you think 
are uh, likely to be influential or to be informative um, in the sense that the, you think that the computer will be able to use those features in order to make its prediction. For example, if you're trying to predict if a building is going to collapse or not, uh, for example, the year in which this building was made is probably an important feature. Um, the, the the size of this building, the, the height of the building is probably an important feature. The material that this building is made of is also probably an important feature. But maybe the color of the building doesn't matter. It would not be an influential feature. Like the name of the street where this building is, is, uh, is located, probably also not um, a useful informative features. So you need to make a choice, make some hypothesis of what you think are the, the influential features uh, that you think will be useful and uh, get rid of the features that are not influential, that you think will not be relevant uh, for your computer to predict um, the, the, the output that you are trying to, to predict. Once you have uh, uh, made an hypothesis regarding the, the choice of the features that you think are influential, then you will need to collect some data. So you will need to collect or to, to mine some data. You need to obtain some data. If you don't have any data, then you cannot uh, use supervised machine learning. So you need to collect some previous examples of observations together with some associated features. So you need to collect some previous examples of buildings, uh, their size, their height, the year uh, they were made, and whether they collapsed or not during a previous earthquake, or if you are trying to predict um, uh, the, the price of a house, you need to come up with some previous example of houses that got sold. You need to know what the price they were sold for. You need to know some features about the, 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 the area of the, of the house, the number of, be of bedrooms, uh, the number of bathrooms, etc. You need to collect some data. So you need to collect some observation together with some, uh, some associated features. And uh, once you have those data that you have collected, then you are going to use those data to train um, your uh, machine learning um, model. So in this case, you will uh, we will uh, talk in the in the following lectures about different algorithms that can be used to do this. But at this point, the, the model will observe those data and try to infer some patterns within those data, and will try to to find a way to use those features to predict the, um, the observation. And once you have this, then you will need to assess the, uh, the accuracy. So you will need to test the accuracy of your model. And typically the way we test the accuracy of the model is to, um, to test based on uh, unknown data, data for which the model has never seen before, we try to test if the model is managed to get to get it right. For example, if you want to train a model that can recognize based on the picture, if it's a cat or a dog, you will provide um, uh, a given number of uh, pictures for which you tell the computer if it's a cat or a dog. Uh, and then once you have trained the computer to do that, you will um, uh, now um, test the computer, you will provide some new pictures, but this time you will not tell if it's a cat or a dog and you will assess what the computer predicts. And you will say, uh, you will check, does the computer get it right? Does it manage to recognize that this is a, a cute cat or not? And uh, based on this, you will test the accuracy of the model. And once the model has a good accuracy, then you can use this model to make some predictions, which means now you have built some um, some uh, confidence in the model. You know that the model is good at recognizing a cat and differentiating from a dog. So it means that now you trust the model and you don't check what the model is doing. You will just use the model uh, to directly predict without even looking at the picture. You can now trust your model that it's going to be able to properly uh, predict if it's a cat or a dog. So now let's move to the, the second family of machine learning problems and machine learning algorithm, which is unsupervised uh, machine learning. 
So in the case of unsupervised learning, so now we're going to train the model without providing any label. We are going to provide some pictures without telling if it's a cat or a dog, or we are going to provide some data, but there is no label. We don't provide any output to the model. There is no observation that is provided. And in this case, the model will try to find some structure, to find some patterns, or to find some clusters within the, the data with no label. So um, typically, like uh, supervised machine learning is much more common than unsupervised, especially for engineering application. But let's just see an example of um, uh, unsupervised machine learning. So let's assume, for example, that you want to um, predict some groups of cities that are similar to each other with the idea that if you know some groups of cities that are similar to each other, then it means that you can say that uh, if something happened in one city, it's very likely to happen in another city that is similar to this city. You can find some groups of cities that look like each other so that if something happened for one, it's very likely to happen for another city. So that's one way that you can make some, uh, some predictions. And so for this, um, what you will do is you want your computer to find some groups of cities that are similar to each other. In this case, that's a, a clustering problem in the sense that you're trying to find some clusters of cities. Clusters are some groups of points that are similar to each other, that are close to each other. So in, the case, in this case, in the case of unsupervised machine learning, you still need to provide some data to the computer, but you don't provide any label. So in the case of cities, for example, what you would do is you, um, you would uh, come up with some, um, you would select some features. So you still need to provide some features, but you will have no observation this time. So you need to uh, still, as a first step, select, make some hypothesis of what are the, the features that you think will be important to um, uh, uh, predict whether different cities are similar to each other or different from each other. So again, some of those features are going to be influential. So for example, like uh, a, a feature that is going to be probably important is the, the population of, of the city, like the number of inhabitants. That's probably a, a very important feature to, um, to, uh, to, to find some groups of different cities that are each, uh, similar like each other. And maybe another one would be the, um, the density, like the number of uh, people or the number of inhabitants per um, square kilometer or um, square mile. Uh, this is probably another very influential features, uh, but maybe some uh, other features like the, um, the name of the city, probably not so important. Like the name doesn't tell you anything about the, the city itself. So, um, and maybe there, there could be some uh, other features that could be um, uh, influential as well. Maybe the area of the city or the... Um, uh, something like this, or maybe the, the, the annual revenue of the city, like if, whether it's a very um, wealthy city or more like a poor city, like maybe those could be some, uh, some other useful features to, to, to detect uh, different types of um, cities that look like each other. And then, so you will take some, um, you will collect some different examples of, uh, of cities. And for each city, you will look at what is the, the value of the density of inhabitants and what is the population. So for example, you will have certain cities like, um, for example, uh, if you take um, uh, the, the New York City area, that's, you have a very high population and the density is pretty high. So that would be uh, the, the point associated to this city, like you would define its position based on the value of those two features. It has a high density, so it will be high. It has a high population, so it will be um, uh, very much on the right. Um, maybe uh, uh, Hong Kong would be another example of a city that has um, uh, probably a density that uh, actually probably even higher than, um, than New York City. So it would be more like, uh, like here. So that would be um, Hong Kong. 
Uh, and then you have some examples of uh, like another city like uh, Los Angeles, for example. Los Angeles has a very high population as well, but the density is much lower. You have a, a lower number of uh, high rise buildings. So the number of inhabitants per unit of surface is uh, significantly lower than in uh, cities like New York City or Hong Kong. Uh, and then, so for example, you have a other example like maybe uh, Mexico City is a, would be another example of a city that has a lot of um, uh, inhabitants, probably even more than um, than LA. Uh, but the the density is also pretty uh, pretty low. It's a very uh, vast city um, that is just occupying a very large surface. So you have a lot of inhabitants, but they are spread over a large surface. So the density is very large. And then so you can have some other example of city that uh, looks like, uh, like like LA or like Mexico or more like New York. Then you have some cities like, um, for example, like um, maybe um, Paris would be an example of a city that um, still has a pretty high density, like the number of people per surface is pretty high, but the total population is... Uh, much lower than New York or Hong Kong, or you have some cities like, uh, like, for example, like Manila. This is an example of a city that has a very high density, but the population is not that high, or at least it's much lower than uh, Hong Kong or New York. And then you have a whole range of cities that are um, like small cities with a small density or popu a small population, like more like uh, maybe um, some uh, countryside um, cities. So then you will take different cities like this and just look at um, the, the value of the population and the value of the density and just put the data like this. And in this case, those are the, the, the training data that you will uh, provide to your um, computer. This is the, the data. In this case, there is no label. There is no output. You're just providing some data with different features. Each data for each city the, the features have a different value and uh, you are not trying to, to predict anything in this case. You don't have any label, uh, no categorical uh, label, no continuous label. So it's not a regression problem. It's not a classification problem. And in this case, what the, in the case of a clustering algorithm, what the computer will do is to find some cluster, that is to say some groups of data that look like each other. So for example, it will um, uh, d determine that those cities, they look like each other, they are close to each other. Then you have those cities also like belongs to the same cluster. Those city belong to the same cluster and those city belong to the same cluster. So in this case, it would have found like there is um, four clusters of cities that group that look like each other. And so that would be the, the step two. The step of learning would be to find some, some clusters. And uh, same thing here. Once you have uh, learned this kind of patterns, you can still make some, uh, some prediction. For example, if you have um, uh, a new city for which you don't know um, what type of city it is, you can look at the population of this city, look at the density of this city, and based on this, say that, okay, it, it looks like it belongs to this cluster. So it means that this city is going to be um, probably very similar to Los Angeles. So uh, if, you, if you have some new cities uh, based on the, the previous city that you know, you can detect like this, like which city appears to be the, the most similar. So in that case, that's step three, you can make some, um, some prediction and for each new city, you can predict like uh, what kind of city is that? Is it a large city with a low population, like a, um, 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 like more like um, a countryside city, or is it more like a, a highly populated and highly dense city like a New York City, or is it more like LA with a high population with a, with a low density? So you you can make a prediction on what type of cluster does it belong to? What types of family of data does it belong to? So in this case, this is the kind of information that you will get from a, a clustering algorithm. You just find some different groups of data. So for example, 
uh, if you were trying to, you would provide different pictures of cats and dogs and the computer will will come up on its own on um, uh, some, uh, for example, if it finds that there is, um, uh, based on those pictures, it will find that certain types of pictures, uh, the animal has a big nose, sometimes it has a small nose, uh, it will find that sometimes on those pictures you have a, a moustache, sometimes there is no uh, moustache, and based on this it will find some clusters of animals that look like each other, that's going to be one family, and another family of other animals that also look like each other but are look differently than the first family of animals so it will find different clusters different families of animals that would be an unsupervised uh, learning process and uh, finally the, the 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 last type of um, learning would be uh, reinforcement um, learning so that's the, the pretty much the, the last category, the last family of learning, the last family of machine learning problem, uh, which is not um, uh, which is a little bit less common, a little bit more novel, so less common in the context of civil engineering. But the, the main idea in this case, so it's that those kind of reinforced learning is good when you don't have so much data available but you can uh, do some action and uh, get some data in return. So for example, uh, again, like typical example of this is if you're trying to teach um, a given model on how to play a video game, uh, it's, it's hard in this case to accumulate uh, a pre-existing training set. It's more useful to let the, um, the computer start to play on its own and depending on whether the computer is winning at the video game or losing at the video game, it will get some feedback based on this and will little by little learn on what is the best strategy on how to win the game. Or another example is a self-driving car where uh, you let the, the, the car drive on its own and based on the action it takes, uh, it will uh, either be... Um, uh, it will receive some feedback from its environment and based on it, it will learn on its own on what is the good way to, to drive in a safe and efficient way. So in the case of uh, reinforced learning, uh, the way it works is that you have um, a given um, agent, so that could be the, the player of the, of the video game, or that can be the, the car that is, um, that is driving. And this agent um, is, tr is going to try to, um, to achieve a given goal, and for this it's going to take some, um, some actions. So uh, this action can be, um, for example, if you are playing Pac-Man, it can be go up, go right, go left, or go down. That's the kind of action that you can take. Or in the case of a car, the actions can be um, accelerate, decelerate, turn left, turn right. Those are the different actions that the agent can uh, can take. And based on this action, the um, it will um, uh, receive a, a feedback from the uh, environment. Either it will receive, um, uh, either it will have done a, a good action, so it will receive um, a reward. For example, in the case of a video game, that can be that it passed a given label, it, it won the game, that's the reward, or it will receive um, a penalty. So in the case of a video game, that would be a game over. It, it lost the game. So, and based on this reward and this penalty, um, the, the model will gradually learn that actions that are generating a reward should be a uh, good action that it will tend to make more in the future, but actions that um, uh, generated a penalty are bad actions that maybe were not should not be uh, taken or maybe were not taken at the right time. So it will favor those actions that led to a reward and will learn from this and gradually will come up with the best optimal actions to take uh, that maximize the, the reward. So in the case that it's like pretty much training an animal where when the animal does something right, you would reward this animal by giving it, uh, giving the animal a treat or giving uh, some, some food, something to eat. 
and um, the the penalty would be like uh, if the animals does something wrong then you would um, maybe yell at the uh, at your dog or trying to make the dog understand that it did something wrong so in this case the dog will try to to favor actions that will lead to a reward rather and try to avoid doing action that leads to um, to a penalty and by um, uh, by doing this kind of cycle so it's a, a real-time learning in this case where you continuously do some um, actions and based uh, on this you gradually learn from the feedback that you receive and you uh, optimize your actions so as to to maximize the reward and that's how you you learn and in this case uh, if you teach a computer like this uh, then at some point like computers can become very good at playing video games for example they can become much better than than humans because they, they quickly learn what are the right actions that leads to a reward and what are the wrong actions that should be avoided because they lead to uh, some some penalty so uh, what we're going to do in the future lecture is to now to to start talking in more details about um, supervised and unsupervised learning method different examples of uh, method to do regression, different example of um, classification and to see more importantly how to use those methods. So we need to understand a little bit about each method, what's the mathematical background, like how does each algorithm works, but more importantly we need to see how to use them in practice and how to, um, to train a, a robust machine learning model that can be used in practice to make some reliable predictions.